Welcome back. Ed Martin here on the Pro-America Report. Our next guest is a fascinating man, an author, uh, someone who is, uh, he is, um, worked in uh, in Italy and has reported on the Pope there and, and been on Vatican Radio. And he's the Rome correspondent for National Catholic Register. And uh, he has written a book, which is the interesting topic I, I want to talk to him, called The Next Pope, The Leading Cardinal Candidates. Now you say to yourself, well, well, when is the next Pope coming? It's not like a presidential election where you say it's in 2020 and November 3rd. The next Pope is when, in fact, it used to be when the current pope died in the recent case it was when the pope decided to resign so we don't know so it's kind of a timely discussion so edward penton welcome to the program how are you today thanks uh, good good to be with you Ed. so let me ask you this question first of all i know it's crazy to even ask it but does anybody have any idea is there any sense that we could be close to uh, a change i guess there's no way to know that right but i mean people still must speculate Yes, um, there is no way to know it. And the, part of the reason why this book has been written is because uh, there isn't any way to know it. But there is yeah. always only a short time between when a conclave is announced and uh, the conclave taking part, taking place, that you right. have to really yeah. get ready to, for it. And so we just really, we really wanted these, uh, this book to be ready in case a conclave happened at any time. And that, of course, that could be at any moment. All right. So now let me ask you about the book. We're talking about the leading. It's called The Next Pope, The Leading Cardinal Candidates. Now, explain to our listeners who may be Catholic or not Catholic and not really understand how is the pope picked? Does the pope have to be one of the cardinals in the room when they're picking? I know there's a tradition of that. You can tell us, but pretend we know nothing is one of my best ways to do it. How does what's going to happen when there is a need for a new pope? Right. Well, as soon as the Pope uh, dies or resigns, um, there is uh, a sort of interregnum period. And then uh, then there's a conclave in which uh, 120, it's usually about a limit of 120 cardinals will vote uh, for the next Pope. Almost always the next Pope comes from the College of Cardinals, which is uh, the Pope's closest advisors. Um, and they could be any of those 120, or actually that's 200 or so uh, who uh, who are eligible. Um, and so usually it's it's one of those who's elected, and we pick these 19 who we think have the the best chance of of being elected. Uh, but actually anyone can actually be uh, elected pope who's baptized. Um, so obviously it doesn't happen very often. And I think only I think about eight times in history have there not been cardinals who've been elected pope. Um, but usually, and certainly, probably in the next uh, uh, conclave, it will be uh, one of the con- one of the cardinals in the in the sacred college. Uh, and we're talking with Edward Penton. And, and t- t- tell me, who are the seventeen? First of all, everybody in America always asks these kinds of things. Are there any Americans that make that short list? Yes, we have two Americans in there. I, but pretty best we don't go through the whole list because <laughs> sometimes uh, yeah, we, we, well, little, I mean, we yep. quite like uh, the readers to have the the full list. But then we have two <laughs> Americans in there. Yeah. Uh, yes, Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, and we have Cardinal Raymond Burke, uh, who's uh, been a long-time Vatican uh, official here, senior Vatican official, although he's not at the moment. He's patron of the Order of Malta. Um, so we have those two uh, Americans in in the 19, but they're a big mix. They're, they come from all countries, of course, uh, from the developing world, from the West, and from uh, from uh, yeah, through, through every continent, really. So uh, that's... Um, that it's it's a it's a all round uh, mix of of cardinals who we believe, um, as I say, have a good chance based on on three factors really: whether they their sanctifying office as a bishop, their governing office, and their teaching office. Those are the three criteria we we look at in the book, and we go through in great detail looking at these cardinals. Um, as in a sort of encyclopedic reference, so readers can get a right. really good idea of of their qualifications and whether they they're el- whether they think they could be eligible to be pope. We don't rank them in sort of one to nineteen. Right. Um, we let the reader decide whether they think they they could be a good pope. Uh, and and I should say that the the book is uh, published at uh, Sophia Institute Press, and I'll put it all up on social media. Uh, and it's called the Next Pope, the Leading Cardinal Candidates. How about the general idea for again for Americans? You watch and you say, well, that was interesting. Uh, you know, the the it, it, Pope John Paul II, he was from uh, Poland, you know, and and then uh, and then mm. uh, 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 Benedict was a German. Um, the current Pope is uh, Argentinian. It feels like they're not Italian anymore. But you mentioned the th- the, the uh, developing world. I, is there a sense that the the, the the group that's deciding will have a preference towards the the developing world towards Africa or Asia I mean I, I know you can you're speculating but you can sort of see who's in the group that's voting and have a little bit of a sense that this might be where it's headed what do you think about that 
Yes, well, the Pope Francis has picked quite a few cardinals from the developing world because he wants to expand it beyond the West and to to make the church uh, make it reflect the more the universality of the church and the and the mm-hmm. fact that the church is growing fastest in the developing world. So, so there's more cardinals now from from that uh, that part of the world. But um, my sense is that it will probably go back. Um, I think to the Italians because I think there's some concern over the last few years about the sort of uh, the turbulence of this pontificate and actually the last uh, the last three if you like although obviously controversial for different ways um, and there's a sense I think among some in the College of Cardinals that they'd like it to go back to the sort of safe pair of hands in the Italians who the Italians had the, bon- the papacy for <clears throat> for about 450 years I think right up until John Paul II so uh, right. So it would go back to to what would be kind of a tradition, but uh, but it's very difficult to say. And I think the next conclave is going to be very difficult to predict because of these new this new sort of factor that the Pope has uh, has brought in here. And so I think we're going to, could well be in for a surprise. But um, but on the other hand, I think it could well go back to the Italians too. Yeah, uh, we're talking with again Edward Penton about his book, uh, "The Next Pope: The Leading Car- Cardinal Candidates," uh, and he is uh, uh, over at the uh, the Rome Correspondent for the National Catholic Register and, and writes all, uh, all a number of places. Um, you know, you, you mentioned uh, sort of how, how it would go. Um, I guess the question is, John Paul II might have started this. Believe me, it's just modernity. But the profile of the popes is bigger. Benedict maybe is an exception, but you know, Pope Francis has a has an international uh um uh, kind of uh, profile, even outside of Catholics, in a way that's different than um, might have ever been expected. It, you know, I guess that's just likely to continue. I mean, in, in some ways, it feels like the the pontiff has gotten more uh, political and more politically uh, active is the wrong word, but maybe sort of in the commentariat. But I, I guess that may be the model of the modern world we're in. Is that the way it feels? Or uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, that's a very good point, because um, there is an Italian saying, which is that uh, a, a fat pope follows a thin one, which means that the next pope, the one that follows the previous one, is often quite different to the one that's go- that, yeah. uh, that he's right. replacing. Right. And so this, the current pope, I think, has been criticized perhaps by some as being overly political and, and um, rather too much um, uh, making the papacy rather politicized. And so it could well go back to being a much more of a... Uh, a, a pontificate that's more, with more emphasis, perhaps on the supernatural rather than than the poli- than politics, perhaps with more of a focus mm-hmm. uh, on the next life rather than this one. And I think I think we could well see a swing back in in various different ways, but probably in that way as well, uh, if there is to be a conclave. I think in the next uh, in the next few years. Uh, one more question: What do you, what do you think a, a the modern? I mean, even um, Francis's um, election a few years ago, uh, not now more than a few years ago. It's starting time flies. You, you know, the next conclave is going to be extraordinary. The, the presence of social media, the presence of uh, of the the uh, ability for the world to be watching. You know, it's not like the old days. You even had to get a big camera in to watch for uh, the the smoke trail above the Vatican. Now you'll you'll likely have uh, unprecedented uh, press coverage and critique and and uh, and uh, analysis I mean it, it almost is hard to imagine this the next conclave being anything but the most extraordinary doesn't it feel that way I think you're right I mean even going back to 2013 it wasn't quite as like it is today in terms of yeah. social media and, and all of that so yes I think I think it could be an extremely uh, interesting uh, event from a media point of view, and I think it will be a lot of un- a lot of things which will be unprecedented about it um, on from that uh, perspective. So yes, I think that will be a very interesting element to this. I don't think it will affect the the outcome of the conclave uh, particularly. I think uh, right. the the cardinals are always kind of locked up anyway, and uh, and uh, yeah. they're actually not allowed. I think uh, certain media anyway during the conclave. So so I think um, that won't change. But I think in terms of what we see and how uh, Conclave is covered, it could be quite different Mm -hmm. next time. 
Well, and also, you know, one other thing, for that period of time when the whole world watches, as you point out, the, the men that are voting are off in a room and they've got their, they don't have a cell phone anyway, even if they were adept at using them. But the rest of the world will be watching. You talk about a moment of sort of uh, uh, an opportunity to evangelize or to, to sell your, uh, your uh, church and the vision. And the funny thing about that is there's not really an obvious person that, w- that Pope will be deceased, likely, and that would be in charge of thinking, how do we sort of sell this moment? And, and so it, 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 interenium is a good term you use. It's kind of this in between because, you know, you think who's who would be the one that would be thinking, hey, how do we, uh, you know, kind of evangelize this moment? Well, you're waiting to see who's kind of going to be in charge. It's an interesting challenge. Anyway, let me, I got to wrap things up. At Edward Penton on Twitter, by the way, also you can follow him there and uh, I will put it all up on social media. Thank you for your time, sir. Appreciate you calling in from Rome. Thanks. Good to talk to you, Ed. Okay, thank you. We'll take a quick break and be right back. It's Ed Martin here on the Pro-America Report. Be back in a moment. 